Thank you. Um, other witnesses in support. Can I have the opposition to this bill? Please come forward. Welcome. Folks that uh, are in opposition, please. Welcome. Mr. Chairman and members, uh, Dan Keurig on behalf of the League of California Cities uh, in opposition to the bill. Um, we've had a, a respectful uh, disagreement here with the author um, for a while as we've talked about this bill um, through the last couple of months. Um, we're not um, against the, the premise behind this bill that there, in certain instances for certain types of housing development, they may require less parking than more general types of, of projects. What we're in disagreement on is we, we don't understand the bill's provision of no housing, basically letting the developer decide how much housing is provided. You mean parking? Uh, parking. I, I'm sorry, the parking. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, representing uh, elected city officials, uh, those individuals are the ones that are trying to ta be tasked with balancing issues in a community. Yes, you have uh, new developments coming into, the, into a neighborhood, but you also have existing development. You have existing uh, residences and, and, and businesses that are there. You wanna make sure, first of all, that you don't have spillover uh, in terms of uh, impacts on, on other adjacent um, uh, buildings. Um, when, when you look through this bill, there are four different types of projects that, that are affected. Two of them, there's been discussion about transit earlier on in this hearing. Two of them are not adjacent to transit. So for those two types of buildings, both senior housing as well as special needs housing, uh, there at least according to the bill, there would not be uh, a, a requirement upon the developer to actually provide uh, the parking uh, necessary to, to at least meet the needs of that, of that particular building. So we're not asking for obviously more parking than is required to be provided. We want enough parking to be able to meet the needs of the residents as well as the visitors and, and, and in some cases, uh, staff that might provide services uh, to, the, to the building. Um, uh, in the, uh, both in the analysis as well as the intent language, there are, there are various studies that are cited to support the need for the bill. One study talks about the Department of Housing had looked at some uh, affordable housing projects near transit and noted a 20 or 25 to 30 percent reduction of vehicle miles traveled associated with those developments. Fair enough, but it wasn't zero. It, 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 if 20 to 25 percent was a reduction, then 70 to 75 percent must have retained their cars. Another example is a transform study that's cited in the analysis that talks about a survey of uh, that was done at night looking at parking lots and, and seeing how many spaces were empty. Um, according to my own uh, little math calculation, according to their own study, 6,479 parking spaces in their own study were occupied that night. We wanna make sure that, that there's a sufficient amount of parking to actually match the needs of the building, not more, but, but sufficient. So uh, for those reasons, we're, we're opposed to the bill. Okay, other witnesses, please. Mr. Chairman, members, David Jones, on behalf of the cities of Glendale, the Marin County Council Members and Mayor's Caucus, uh, and the city of San Marcos, as uh, we echo the comments, Mr. Kerrig, uh, all things are local, and so everything is individual to that very neighborhood. We've got a difficult time sometimes citing affordable housing projects, and having a parking problem ad added to a specific location would make it more difficult in some cases to make the neighborhoods accept those, those facilities for those reasons we're opposed to the bill. Jonathan Clay, on behalf of the city of Encinitas, also in opposition, echoing the previous comments, we do not believe the existing law should be changed related to parking standards. We think that should be a local decision. Um, we also have concerns, the previous iteration of the bill had dealt with uh, how you calculate all densities. The city is requesting an amendment to try and clarify uh, how densities are uh, calculated. For those reasons, we're opposed to the okay. bill. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Paul Gonzalez representing the cities of Camarillo and Lakewood. Uh, we would like to echo the comments of our colleagues in opposition to the bill. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, we have questions. Could, could uh, Senator I, Allen, please. Yeah, so I, I, um, I, I'm sympathetic to some of these concerns that have been raised um, because it's a rather blunt instrument in telling all cities what to do. 
uh, when ultimately you're facing your own sorts of challenges on the ground with regards to traffic flow and mitigation, and I'm sure you're also really worried about spillover and you know one new project comes in and then all the residents living nearby are complaining like crazy because of um, all the new parking impacts on their streets. So um, can you talk a little bit about the your, your you know the, the interaction with the author um, and with regards to amendments and are, are you know are there some little things that you think could be done that it will not make you fall in love with the bill but at least reduce your um, your your biggest concerns? Uh, you're asking uh, yes, the League uh, of Cities, right? Sorry, the League of Cities, right? So the right. amendments were actually mentioned by this yeah, gentleman okay. too. But Go yeah. ahead. Please. Yes, sir. Uh, we um, what what the way we approach this issue is basically conceding that certain types of projects presumably had less demand, but then trying to look at those individual projects and trying to, at least based on um, experience with those projects, try to uh, have a number that was lower in statute. For, so have a, have a new baseline that, that matched that project. In other words, for senior housing, in, in, uh, for, for, for seniors, uh, under existing law, uh, the standard in existing law is one space per bedroom. We offered one space per unit with the notion that uh, most seniors are probably going to hold on to at least one car, uh, and and that that seemed to be uh, a reasonable uh, sort of a new a new baseline. So what we would like in the statute is is to basically take a practical approach to this bill. You got four different types of projects. You've got many examples of those projects around the state. Look at the level of parking required by those types of projects, and then try to establish a reasonable benchmark based on that practical analysis, put that in the law. Then you're much more, most, more likely to have less controversy uh, going forward uh, from the community. But if you have uh, no, uh, no benchmarks and you leave it to the developer, uh, maybe some developers will do the right thing, but uh, but, but you know, that's putting a lot of trust that, that that'll happen every time. And if it doesn't happen, then what we think, you'll, you'll have more uh, community opposition uh, going forward. And we think that's really a policy committee. Policy issue this committee ought to think about is, is uh, you know, if you have uh, increased community opposition, uh, that could lead to, lead to more uh, challenges building affordable housing in the future. Uh, can, I, can I ask a question? Um, just oh, you wanted to, Senator he, Allen. He alluded please. to an amendment. I'm, excuse me, Mr. Chair, but he, he just alluded to an amendment, so I wanted to. All right. Sure. Second yeah. answer. Go ahead, sir. Senator Allen, um, the amendment I alluded to, the assembly member originally, pre previous set of amendments had language in there trying to clarify existing law in terms of how you round up or round down for calculating base density. The assembly member had removed that language based on the city's opposition. We still remain opposed to the language because we think the existing law is ambiguous. So ours, that's a nuance a little different than the parking. We also have the same concerns as the parking. But the assembly member did remove the first iteration of the language to uh, that we had concerns with as well. Okay, I think we have several other questions. So uh, Senator Mendoza is next, and then Senator McGuire. Senator Cannella. Senator Cannella. You want to go first? Yeah, okay. Yeah, just All a right. quick, you know, my original, when I looked at this, I thought, look, if people want to buy or rent a place without parking, that's their prerogative. They're not going to have a place to park. But I think Senator Allen brings up an excellent point in that that's just going to spill over into other neighborhoods. And I, I can understand this if this is in downtown San Francisco where there's just no place to park and that's going to, you know, that's the way it is. But I live in a suburban area and that's going to be a, a little tougher. So uh, what's wrong with giving the local government the flexibility to say, look, this is next to a transit, there's clearly not gonna be parking, it's very controlled in the surrounding areas, therefore there won't be any parking, because you know, I, I don't think that's necessarily fair to, to just have all the spillover into the adjacent properties. That, that, I have, I'm very much concerned about that. So. Should, I, um, should I go ahead and try to yeah, tackle please. some of these issues? Yeah, please, you wanna to respond to the Senator's question. Sure, absolutely. Um, let me just uh, respond to several of these uh, issues raised by opposition. First of all, I think the opposition states that uh, this bill would allow the developer to make the decision, uh, you know, on behalf of the, you know, everyone. And that's not uh, quite correct. I think what the bill tends to do is to allow the cities to negotiate uh, with the developer uh, a optimal level of parking for that particular development. Now, uh, we also, as I mentioned before, we amended the bill in such a way that uh, we could allow the cities to use a parking study. So if they have conducted, let's say, a parking study within the last five years, they, they are welcome to use that parking study to justify the increased parking requirement. 
So um, now the uh, the issue of uh, spillover, I think that can be addressed with that parking study. We're not requiring the city to conduct a new study, for example, but you know, if they have you know, done a parking study within the last five years, they, you know, they could use that. So they could uh, essentially uh, justify the increased parking requirements with a parking study. Now, with respect to uh, the bill itself, the bill is very narrow, as I mentioned before. First of all, all these projects that would trigger my bill uh, would have to be 100% affordable. That's criteria number one. And secondly, it would have to satisfy one of the three uh, criteria that I mentioned. Uh, we, I heard a little bit about the, the senior, uh, senior. Absolutely. First of all, all projects need to be 100% affordable. And that's a base, that's a baseline. Now, secondly, it has to meet one of the three criteria. One, uh, it has to be within one, it has to be within one half mile of a major transit stop. And by that, we mean either ferry, rail, or intersection of uh, buses, for example, that would provide services every 15 minutes. So, and secondly, uh, it, uh, development could be a senior citizen only uh, co a complex development. And number three has, uh, you know, has, has to serve the uh, special needs uh, population. Those, so those are the three criteria that uh, would have to be, one of which would have to be met. Now, uh, the argument regarding um, local control, I think that all goes back to the parking study. I think we're not limiting, we're not tying the hands of the cities. We are simply allowing the flexibility for cities to negotiate with the developer in making sure that we are achieving the optimal uh, level of parking. Uh, the point raised by uh, opposition regarding uh, the baseline, I think that is uh, stated in the uh, league's opposition. Now, I think we wanted to uh, you know, find, a, uh, find a balance, but the thing is, we don't want to, to have the pendulum being swung too far to the left or to the right. So allowing a baseline you know, is something that we're considering, but we're not, we don't want to uh, you know, alter it so that it kind of you know, defeats the purpose of the bill. So um, the, uh, I think those are the main points raised. I think as far as the city of Encinitas, the issue was rounding up versus rounding down. Now the, the, law, the original law said that uh, if there was a fraction, then uh, the number would be rounded up. So our intent was to basically clarify the law to make sure that, you know, that the law says that, you know, any fractional numbers ought, ought to be rounded up. And that uh, invited opposition from the, the city of Encinitas. And so that we restore that original language so that now it, you know, it's back to uh, existing law. And I think those are the major concerns uh, raised uh, today. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I, I just want to announce um, that um, we're deferring um, AB uh, 1178, item 15, for one week. So if you're here to speak on that, I just want to announce that so you can have that information. Members, okay. And, uh, the la and the last point I want to make is that uh, we're also working on the piece regarding senior citizens and also special needs in relationship to transit. Yes, okay. Senator Mendoza, uh, Senator McGuire. Thank Senator you, Mr. Bates. Chair. Um, yeah, okay, Senator Roth. I appreciate your bill. I know it's one intention. I, I support affordable housing. I spent 10 years in the city council and that's what I, I spent a lot of time fighting with my colleagues about affordable housing. Uh, most of the car, most of the projects that they wanted to do for low-income housing or affordable housing was geared toward uh, senior housing because that was an easy sell. Uh, but when you have poor families that, that need housing, they always were left behind because it's much harder for them to try to approve those kind of projects. Yeah. And it's a, it's, I know your, your bill here doesn't directly state here, oh, okay, uh, low-income families or, or families who are in need of housing. Uh, many families are living in garages right now as we speak in my district because just housing is not affordable and it's uh, not very readily available. Uh, so I, I wish your bill would do a little bit more there. Uh, another concern that I have as a, as a council, as a former councilman is that, and I, I recall this clearly, that most of these projects, they're low income senior housing or whatever, they're only low income for about 50 years. After that, then they revert to regular housing. 
And once you revert, then you're stuck with a low, with a parking requirement that's very low. So you're not, a, unless they're gonna tear down the building and then go ahead and reapply for new parking standards, you're not covering that right now. And that's gonna create a problem with our, some, some of these cities that have, and especially in some downtowns that there's a lot of spillover of, uh, of parking into the community. A lot of cities need to have these strict parking controls to make sure that we, uh, parking requirements, because we wanna make sure we maintain some sort of order in the residential areas. So I, I do, so I, I do kind of, I'm a little bit torn here because I do support the affordable housing aspect of it. I'm a little bit concerned about taking away the opportunity for local government to have a say because every city is different. And I, we're talking about if it's a San Francisco or another city that has different kind of density issues, some are more rural. In my particular community, is, it, it, it's, it changes, it's different. Every, I have represent 16 different cities. So the, each one of them has their own issues, especially in certain downtown. So I wouldn't think that one size fits all approach would be good at this time. Uh, I, like, I like the aspect of, of, I like the way you're working with, uh, as far as you're targeting to this particular population as far as housing is concerned. Uh, I do like the, uh, the benchmark uh, potential because I know that some of these uh, populations might not drive as much or require par parking, I get it. And I know some cities might have their parking structure but parking requirements too strict. I get that. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to work that out. I'm not sure, I just have a hard time uh, uh, supporting the bill, especially when it comes, when these, when the low, low income requirement falls off in about 50 years, what's gonna happen with parking at that moment? I mean, if I could quickly respond to that. Uh, yes, please, the way, the, the way the, questions. Yeah, the, the, bill, the way the bill is written currently actually benefits uh, families as well as uh, seniors. Because, you know, as I mentioned, you know, the bill is very limited in scope. First of all, it has to satisfy the requirement that it has to be 100% affordable. So that's the baseline, that's the very baseline. And, and on top of that, you know, as I mentioned, it has to meet one of the, the three uh, criteria. Now, um, and uh, the, this, the scenario that you described actually would fit right into that because uh, families would fall into the, the first category, for example, you know, if, if they're, they're part of the affordable, 100% uh, uh, affordable families, they, would, could t they potentially could take advantage of that. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure why, you know, the 55 years, that's the statue. I mean, that's that, that statue, but, but I'm not sure why families would be excluded under my measure, uh, under your scenario. Um, basically what you're saying is you have three categories. The around the transit stations, a half mile, the senior housing, and the special needs housing. Okay, those are the three categories. So, if you had the housing around the transit station, that could be the family housing, correct? Okay. Okay. Um, if you put a housing around the transit station, wouldn't, wouldn't there be a plan for that area that would uh, determine what the proper amount of housing, parking, et cetera, for that neighborhood when they do a plan around a, a transit station? Well, for all 100% affordable How do you, And that, that, that was kind of like, I was looking at this bill, I was reading it. I, I, I think that um, the idea of reducing housing around transit stations, that's pretty much, we should do that. I mean, that's, I mean, uh, not housing, but uh, parking. But but I was looking at him, that's why I did that. Uh, but- uh, oh, your fault, Dan. Yeah, I was looking at Dan. But, um, um, the idea of reducing the parking around the transit station is a common thing that we should do, okay? But how far should we go is the question, right? So um, that that's, I think, what I'm hearing from Senator Mendoza and maybe Senator Allen and Senator Canella. So we got we got a couple more. We got, um, we got Senator McGuire, we got Senator Bates, we got Senator Roth, okay? So go ahead, you have the floor. No, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. First of all, I just want to thank the assembly. We're having a good discussion here. Yeah, no, absolutely, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank the assemblyman for uh, all the work that he has put into this legislation uh, and greatly appreciate it. And the record that you have is uh, fantastic and I do appreciate you coming forward here today. I do have some concerns um, related to this bill and I wanted to uh, lay them out. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to support the bill today. Uh, would hope they can support it on the floor uh, as long as there are some amendments. And I just want to lay out my concerns. And again, this is nothing personal against the author because I think uh, one of the best members uh, that the state has. Um, for, but a few items that I'd like to just lay out. Um, one is, um, in most cases, 
uh, and have served on city council as well as the Board of Supervisors. Uh, local government has the ability to be able to negotiate with a developer. And what I've always seen, and I come from a community of 14,000, uh, that we've been able to provide parking concessions um, as far as taking parking away uh, each time we've asked. And I have not seen a challenge of eliminating parking, at least in the developments, probably been involved in at least 30 of them uh, over my uh, 15 years in local government. Mm -hmm. So number two, I have never seen uh, where a local government will concede its authority to a developer and simply allow them to make a decision. So that is a significant concern that I have because uh, I always want us to ensure that we're providing local control um, and empowering those that are doing the work every day on the planning side. Um, and I am concerned that this puts more authority in the developer's hands when a city and or a county can negotiate uh, to what they think is going to be best serving the residents of that community. Um, so in Healdsburg, uh, very compact uh, and extremely um, busy uh, as it is a destination city. Parking is a serious issue and there's probably very few political uh, discussions that are as hot uh, than parking in that community. That said, we've been able to build more affordable housing per capita than any other city in the county. And we've been able to negotiate reductions in parking every time, uh, allowing for on-street parking as well. And again, this has nothing to do with the author, but having the state come in and say, this is what you're gonna have to do, uh, I just can't support that. So again, I would hope that we can continue to work on it because I think that there is a compromise and this is just my own personal opinion. Uh, every city in Sonoma County and most in Marin are in opposition um, and which is why I can't support it. But again, uh, Mr. Suleiman, this has nothing uh, to do with you uh, or personal pleas because uh, I know that you have been an absolute champion for this and uh, would like to continue the conversation. Okay. Um, Senator uh, Bates and Senator Roth comments. Senator Roth, you know, who wants to go first? Well, thank you. Um, I guess this is for the league. Uh, maybe I don't understand this, but I assume that when a city sets parking requirements that you have some basis for doing so and don't just make it up. So why would the study requirement that's set forth in our analysis in paragraph four, the area-wide or jurisdiction-wide parking study, not address the league's concerns? In other words, if the study supports additional parking for a particular development, and I'm all for local control, I think I've made enough statements in this hearing room and other places that my position on that's pretty clear in education and all over the place. But why would that study not be sufficient to address your concerns with respect to the additional parking? So if the study, based on empirical evidence, supports additional parking for a facility, as a city or county, you put the additional parking requirement in place. Now maybe, I've mis maybe I misunderstand the bill, maybe I misunderstand the study requirement or the results that come from that study. Could you clarify that for me? Uh, yes, Senator. Um, here's the issue. That's one of the reasons why we've been looking for benchmarks is because we've got 482 cities, and if this bill becomes law, all 482 of them are going to have to go out and hire a planning consultant to do a study. Why? Because three of these projects, there's actually four projects, and I'll come back to that in a second. Well, Th only if you have a situation that would give rise to transit-oriented development, the, the uh, likes of which we're talking about here. Uh, uh, no, so sir. One, one pro there's, four pro there's four projects. I'll talk about the three that the assembly member mentioned, and I'll talk about the fourth. The first project is an affordable housing development near transit. And as we've talked before, we do agree that uh, transit, being close to transit, will reduce the need for cars. We don't agree it eliminates them. So, but this bill here says the developer coming in the door it, it, we, we can't impose any of our minimum parking requirements. So if we have such a study, we can't use it. That's our, that's our feeling. Um, now why is that? Tell me that again. Because the bill says 
that we cannot impose, um, uh, shall not impose on line 25, shall not impose page 18, a minimum vehicular parking requirement if the development meets any of the following criteria. So it means we can't use it. Yeah. So okay, we're going to be put in the position of having to yeah. go out, do a study, and based Maybe upon substantial it. evidence in the record, get back to a point where we think would be co our common sense. If we if we if we have uh, parking criteria and we and it's reasonable, we're going to have to go out and do studies to, to actually and pay for those studies to come back and get to a reasonable benchmark that we think we probably could ar arrive at in this policy process. We looked around it. At these projects. And, and Senator, the other thing is two of the projects we're talking about are not near transit. The senior housing development is not near transit, nor are the special needs projects. So if I'm if I if it's a city and some of our cities have very extensive transit, uh, they're fortunate enough to have it, many don't. So in a city, uh, you would pretty much have to look at your entire community because you don't know where in the community a developer is going to pr propose one of these projects. And when they propose one of those projects, you're going to be looking at a standard where the developer can say, you know what, I can provide as much parking as I would like to provide, and this is the amount I, I think uh, I can provide. So it, it, it's going to be extremely costly. That's why we think that let's, let's take the time Let's take a practical approach to this bill. There's plenty of senior housing projects out there. Let's look at the reasonable parking requirements that are associated with those projects. Let's find some reasonable benchmarks. Let's, if we can stick those into law, then what's gonna happen is maybe only rarely somebody will have to go out and do a study. And for the most part, these will be acceptable uh, standards for both the development community as well as local government. But, but, and and uh, it, it will be good for the affordable housing policy. But the study's not required unless you disagree with the requirements of the bill. And if as a city you disagree with the requirements of the bill because you think additional parking is required, then you would need the study to support your decision. So your, your comment about 482 cities having to go out and do a parking study, I guess if, they've, if they're loaded with money they can do it, but they don't have to do it unless they agree with the provisions of this bill given their particular circumstances in their particular city. Am I not correct? Uh, before we continue, the chairman thinks that we should put this bill over a week for the group to get together so you can work out the differences. So the chairman highly recommends that we do that. We, I, I, so if we're going to do that and you agree, maybe we can stop the conversation on this bill, continue it for a week, hopefully you can work out the differences. Is that agreeable to you? I'll be happy to do so. Fine okay. with me, Mr. Vice Chair. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Great idea. All right. Who's here? Okay. Sir, please. Thank you very much. 